In today's episode of All Things Apostolic, we are continuing our discussion of Gen Z, and I have special guest, pastor and youth pastor, Boston Young. Uh, sermons are sometimes an hour, but a lot of times what the 30, 45 minutes mm-hmm. would probably be the average. And I worry about the attention span of our young people being able to stay engaged in the sermon because you don't want pastors who have to do antics to, yeah. to maintain attention for that long. But you feel like they, if they have a personal interest, they will be able to maintain yeah. their attention. So the deal for me is not trying to have the coolest lights and show and do the most backflips yeah. and have the most whatever the real deal is you've got to get through their filtration system and their filtrations just from my research the gen z it's not about millennials are uh not my favorite i am a millennial so i'm allowed (laughs) to say that uh we were all about the lights in the show and it had to be the gen z are about the purpose because they've lived in a world where it seems like there's not really any purpose and everything's mm. chaotic and everything's mm-hmm. upside down. So if they have a purpose, okay, so one of the things... So in a way, it's more substantive. It's more Millennials substantive. Millennials were kind of yeah. superficial and you're seeing Gen Z is, but you have to get past that get filtration. Past so at the, there's a okay. point of superficiality, but once you get, once you use, once you hook it, then you can... Okay. Okay, so this, sound, this is a really good example that, uh, a, that I'm running actually is, and... It's based off research by an, a, another doctoral student who did it with a restaurant is, and I'm doing it with a hostess system, but with a restaurant, a restaurant host, he had Gen Z's being the restaurant host. He told them he would give them a $1 raise if they got better reviews on how to be a good host because they're always on the phones, they're texting, they're yeah. distracted, whatever. So get a dollar more, okay, an, dollar hour more an hour if you can get good reviews. Okay. Okay. So to a lot of millennials and definitely to my dad's generation and up, that seems like, oh, I need yeah. to get five reviews. That's, <clears throat> okay. He, I don't think, I think his numbers were like 40% of the kids did it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because they didn't care? They didn't care. The, mo- okay. the more money was but, not a motivator. No. Okay, then he switched it and he said, look, this is why it's important. It's you walk through the door. They're the first face you see. Mm-hmm. If you're happy, if you're upbeat, you're all this kind of stuff. You are what you're doing. It, they, he put import, emphasis of importance, no money, emphasis of an importance of the hostess job. And it mm-hmm. got through to the Gen Z. And I think it was like 80 or 88 percent, something like that, of his Gen Z's bought in and the reviews went up and everything. So that's so interesting. They're not really looking for, which is traditional in, high, in yeah. um, K-12 and stuff, that external reward system. No. They, if you can put, have you can help them recognize intrinsic value. What they're doing is valuable. Then they will do it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it's, but in and some ways it's more substantive. It's way more, and that's why everyone wow. loves to hate that they're just like the doomed generation. They're so much more substantive and capable mm-hmm. of doing everything's about the cause. Everything's about the purpose. Everything's about it's even if you read, I can't remember who it is, but he's written like 10 books on Gen Z. The one I'm talking about is Gen Z goes to work. Mm-hmm. Uh, there have been a lot of negative comments on that, right? Okay. That they're lazy. Yeah. They want flexibility. They want to stay home. Yeah. And all of those things are true. But at the same time, if you leverage it correctly, that they see the value. And so they don't see the and understandably because we just got sent home for three years right, from work, right. they don't see the value in going to the right. office. So if you can show them why it's valuable, they buy in. Mm-hmm. If you can make them feel comfortable and act, access to it, they'll buy in and they'll buy in better than definitely better millennials. Mm-hmm. So there's a well, lot of things like that that w- the perspective is just wrong. Is it's not that they're lazy; it's that. They've been told it's not valuable to go to work. Mm-hmm. And so why do I need to go to work? I can do the work at home. So once you prove to them that it is valuable, then they'll go to work. Now, this is a tangent, and we won't get off on this, but it makes me think of another area. One of the things Jonathan Haidt argues is that Gen Z is more prone to political dysfunction. And because of, again, what he claims is, is the um, result of, of social media, and having that tethered 
that um, phone-based childhood is that um, there's a gap in people's lives and they are going to fill it with political causes that are meaningful to them. Um, but sometimes if they don't have good, strong moral and value grounding, then their ability to discern what's the correct side of morality will be challenged. And of course, uh, he, he's Jewish, but he gives the example of Hamas and the attack on Israel, and that we see a lot of Gen Zers um, supporting the barbaric attack uh, because they're saying that, that basically Israel is an oppressor. And so because they see the world through this lens of power, which is a very common lens right now, and there's oppressor and oppressed, and Israel falls in the oppressor category, then it makes any kind of resistance against them morally okay. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just kind of interesting that they'll get caught up. Well, they really then are, are possibly in a good way or a negative way susceptible to getting caught up um, in political causes or other things if they see, wow, this, this gives meaning to their life. They're seeking yeah. meaning. They're seeking meaning. And okay, so this is part of the deal and not to be a, an apologist for Gen No, Z, that's okay. But I kind of am. Yeah. Is the, the deal with Gen Z is, okay, so... And I just, we just ran this experiment. I have a very good friend who lives in Dubai. Okay, so the whole Hamas situation. Mm -hmm. The media he gets... Very different. Very different from yes. the media I get. Okay, yes. so if you're... It, so it's based off of the algorithms. Okay, mm -hmm. so if I'm following the majority apostolic Pentecostal preachers, my feed is going to be directly affected. I'm not going to see the same media right. as the high school kid in my church who's right. obsessed with basketball and is going to be fed by those things. Right. Okay. And so th these kids, now we're in church, so his feed's going to be affected yes. and it's going to be more well-rounded, whatever. But you get some random kid at Outgrove High mm -hmm. that isn't connected to any Christians, isn't even connected to anyone of a God consciousness, well, his feed is going to be directly mm -hmm. built around putting him into a box. And that's really a concern even of adults, not just yeah. Gen Z. Oh, yeah. All of us are being fed things that uh, support our own ideology, and we are less and less challenged by yeah. alternate ideologies where we have to learn to understand those ideologies and maybe compromise with them, or, or yeah. I don't know if compromise is the right word, but to be able to discuss through issues and sometimes agree to disagree. Yeah. Um, it's a very different situation nowadays. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think there is that concern of um, of people, Gen Z and even older people, being fed particular lines of ideology that are, I don't know, yeah. I haven't seen data, but possibly making them more extremist. Honestly, I, I know this is a conversation about Gen Z, but yeah. I would say elderly people are probably just as controlled as yes. young people because yeah. they don't even understand that the media what's is, happening what's happening and they're just siloing 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 deeper and deeper the same way the kids are so it's right. the same right. same problem but it's it's i wouldn't blame it on say it's a gen z specific right. problem because you're saying maybe even gen z has more capability to recognize that they're being siloed in some of the older generations i would can't. say i've had conversations with and this is i'm all my research is specific to the the 120 to 160 kids that I work with. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm not saying societally. I'm mm -hmm. saying my kids. Mm -hmm. They understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so they try it. This is where it gets very, that for even for, for me as a millennial, to think like this is difficult. But they try it. Some of them that I've been talking to, they try and build their feed. They'll follow someone oh, wow. from a different point and of view. And intentionally make it go. Intentionally okay. to try and uh, manipulate the algorithm to say whatever instead of just siloing them deeper and deeper into the wow. their uh, you know the what just thinking the way they right think. right just into their particular yeah. and I'm not so recommending that or anything it's just an interesting concept to me that as yeah. a millennial I never had to go through yeah so they're going through things and having to think about life and yeah media and everything in a different way than I know ever yeah had to. well and I think the um, I, one of the concerns with social media and so potentially people getting more into the extremes ideologically were just, I think it seems like 
societally, we have less of a sh less shared values and less of a shared reality. Mm -hmm. And so we just see more see more extremism in in inability to just have dialogue. Yeah. It, it's really we're entering such a um, an interesting time. So it'll it'll be further interesting to see how Gen Z impacts that as they age, because mm -hmm. uh, they're kind of, um, the older ones are in their early tw early to mid twenties now. So it'll be interesting to see how how they progress through some of the issues of adulthood with I, this specific type of childhood yeah. they've had. I would say, and I would say we are having a, a very, everyone's a doomsdayer and I'm more positive about stuff. So just societally, we're not talking about depression, anxiety, and that we right, got off right, on a different direction. Right. But societally, if you think of every major independent podcaster or YouTuber or something like that, the direction that everyone loves to talk about the Gen Z is the most liberal. Look at every single, if you look at every single Gen Z, the people that the media that Gen Z is consuming in vast amounts. Every single one is conservative. More conservative, yeah. Every That's, single one. Yeah. So hmm. if you look at the media, that mainstream media, that is, that's all liberal. But right. every single form of media that young people are consuming on purpose, the one, yeah. not, what the, not what if they turn on a TV, what comes up. Right. But what do they search out? What right. are they listening to to our podcast? And that is one of the benefits of having the internet where now conservative voices have yeah. more opportunity to be heard. Yeah. We didn't have that before. No. no. So I don't, yeah, yeah that's, no, this that isn't helps. a political show, but right. just to put some, it's not as doom and gloom as you think. Yeah. I would say my youth group is. But that's probably, like you said, you're speaking, we're talking about um, young people who are coming from overall good families, religious yeah. families that have a strong church community. And so they are conservative yeah. and they're seeking out conservative, other conservative voices yeah. online. Exactly. But the numbers, I mean, if you think of the world's largest podcasters, top 10 are mostly conservative. So, so it isn't maybe just. Yeah. Hmm, if you look at the numbers, if you compare the top three podcasters to the top three television programs in America, the numbers are conservative. If you compare, yeah, CNN so that may to, bode well for the yeah. future. So I'm not if, saying it's all doom and gloom and right. that they're just a bunch of radical liberals. There's right. actually a lot of now they're being battered by media and they're struggling with anxiety and all this stuff. And, mm -hmm. But it's not as doom and gloom as we think it is. Mm -hmm. It's 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 doom and gloom because the media says it is. But mm -hmm. if you look at the numbers, it's not as scary as you think. So then, um, some of the uh, increase in mental health issues uh, may be due to social media. Um, do you see it being affected by specific parts of social media? Yes. Yeah, so I personally think a lot of the problems with social media is a problem. Number one, it's you know where you spend the majority of your time. But the real, pro I think a lot of the social media blame is actually a pornography thing. Specific to that Specific aspect to, of it. Okay. Yeah. So, and I'm not saying there's pornography. On, there's pornography on Instagram and TikTok and all these right. things. Okay. So I'm, pornography is a very broad, broad term. Right. Uh, but the, these kids are being exposed to pornography at an age they were not meant to be exposed to these kind mm -hmm. of things. And I'm not as psychologists so I'm, there's sort right, of psychologists right. that will speak to this but there is a term it's uh children are getting old younger mm -hmm. is that they're being exposed mm -hmm. to adult themes they're being exposed to okay so they're being sexualized they're being earlier. sexual but that's been happening with clothing and other stuff for years yeah so they're 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 being exposed to sexual themes at 10 yeah. years old yeah okay we humanity was not meant for that right. so I don't care if you're a Christian or not a Christian, we weren't wired to be right. sexual creatures at course, 10 years old. Puberty is also, which is kind of unusual, and we're not going to get into details on that, but that is physiologically, ha biologically yeah. happening earlier. Yeah. For whatever reason, our bodies are 
um, or, or the bodies of young people are hitting that age of puberty much younger, which is concerning as well. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're so your hormones and everything are going. Okay. Plus but then what also there's more more things. It's not. It's a major pornography. Pornography would be to me the number one issue with what's going on. Okay. But there's more. Is okay. I didn't see a dead person until I was an adult. These kids are seeing people actually die on social yeah. media and YouTube, yeah. and they saw they saw the beheadings of ISIS. My, the 12 year olds in our youth group saw people get beheaded. Okay, I didn't see mm. real horrific atrocities. Okay, so you're yeah. 12 years old, your mind wasn't meant to see those kind of things. Yeah. That, that's not something, you're, and so there's a scarring, there's a searing, there's a, okay, they, they aren't, children aren't meant to be exposed to the atrocities of life. Right. That's something that you're supposed to be They're strong before you get it. Yeah. So you're losing that innocence. And then you're losing that innocence on a just the atrocity of life. There's a sexual yeah. siloing, and this is where there's also, for, especially for young guys, is with pornography. Is you're, you're supposed to there's a side of life where you're supposed to go and play sports to show off for the girls. But if you're addicted to pornography, who cares about the actual girls? There's just pornography. Right, okay, so right. and I won't get into that, but you get deeper and deeper into that, and you don't care about. The outside world, you just go deeper and deeper. Then you don't have community. Then you don't have your teachers. Then you don't have trust. They're isolating you. themselves. And you're just going further and yes. further down the silo. Yes. On top of the fact that you've been exposed to murder and death and beheadings and all this stuff. as it, And this is not before. And I don't, you know, I'm not a sociologist. But I guarantee that seeing those things in developing world countries where there's wars and atrocities marks and scars those kids. Right. right. But here in America, we haven't seen those things. Right. in my generation or your generation. For the first time, our kids are being exposed to those. Mm -hmm. And that's some of the, why I would say the data is just off the charts and it's correct. It is because of social media, but I don't think it's some evolutionary where the blue light is distorting our mind right. or something. Right. I think it's the, the content of, and the time, I'm not saying, I'm not discrediting right. that. Right. But I do think if you're reading Bible stuff for six hours a day, it's healthy. So I'm not, okay, so I'm, if you listen to all right. things apostolic seven hours a day, it's, it's good. Okay. okay. So there's good forms, but it's what, it's the, what content, how the content is being taken and what, when you're being exposed to certain themes and actions and violence and stuff, it does distort your brain and they're having to fight with that. And luckily our kids, our church kids, have access to hope and to be pulled out yeah. and to support and talk about and counsel and that kind of thing and the Holy Ghost and all that. But this is something general that when we get a new kid out of the high school that comes to church, these are real issues that he, he or she are struggling mm -hmm. with that we have to be aware of. Mm -hmm. And on that note, I think we'll, we'll pause cause we, um, We've had a great episode, but I, so you can't move. Okay. okay. <laughs> you have to stay because there's, I think there's more questions. You've, you've got a lot of knowledge to share with us. So thank you so much for joining us today and please join us. We'll have a follow-up episode um, interviewing Boston Young regarding Gen Z. Thank okay. you so much.